Hey guys, so let's say your brake lights aren't working on your Mazda Miata. Um, there are a couple things you can do. So I got first I started with new bulbs. I changed them out. They looked good, but I changed them anyways to make sure the connection was good. And they both I figure it was probably a fuse or something like that. Um, so I changed the bulbs out. The bulbs you need are the 1156 part number bulb and uh, that uh, didn't do the trick for me and apparently if the fuse is out for the reverse lights then uh, what you need to do or I think your signal lights or your brake, brake lights won't work so if, if you have a combination of that then it will be your fuse from what I understand um, so the next thing you can do is this is this is my new sensor I've bought from Rock Auto and the part number on or not a sensor sorry a switch part number on that is it's a a Wells brand and uh, the part number is the JA4195 and it's called the reverse light switch on the website and so the test you can do is I just said I had speaker wire, but any wire would work. Just wire about this length, and then on the ends I pulled it over so it fits, because these fit into into a connector. So now you pull you pull out your your switch, and we'll go under the car, and I can show you uh, where that switch sits. And basically, you're gonna to test you can test the switch for continuity, um, but another easy test you can do. If you put the car in reverse with this in and the reverse lights don't come on, then unplug it, unplug these two wires from the switch, insert one end of each of these into where these wires go and if your lights are on you know it's a switch because now you're just bypassing the switch and the, it'll be on in any gear. So let's go under the car and check. So here's the transmission, here's the front of the car and it's located if I shine the light here, uh, you can actually see it sticking out. My wires are off. Um, I've disconnected those wires at this point. But uh, that's where it sits. And the wires stack up under the transmission. And they come down over here, these two wires. And then the other end is going to go in the other terminal. So what that should do is turn on the brake lights no matter what gear you're in if the ignition is on. So the wire is in the wire is in place and here's the car. I'm gonna go turn on the ignition and it can be in any gear for this test because it it will always have power going to the lights now. So the car is in neutral right now actually with the park brake on and reverse lights are on. So if I go pull that wire out Watch what happens to the reverse light. So that's like deactivating the switch. So this is your simple test piece. You don't even have to dig out the multimeter. If you have a piece of wire, pull out, pull this out, the original one, stick it in, or stick, stick the wire in to the terminals and you will know right away if it's your switch. Nice simple test. So the tools you will need for the job uh, you can use a crescent wrench which is what I used to get it off but I believe it's a 22 millimeter uh, wrench. Nope. Twenty. 24 millimeter wrench to take it off. Uh, then you also need your floor jack. I like to have a mat to lie on. Um, at least one or two jack stands. And a light to see what you're doing.
I also recommend, uh, most likely your car will be hot because um, you're reaching up under the exhaust. A nice set of long leather gloves. I'm just using an old pair of welding gloves. So the first thing you're going to want to do is unplug the terminals. You can reach up onto that side of the transmission and then they'll come out over here. And uh, then you're going to reach your engine here and unscrew this piece. And my exhaust has actually cooled up down enough that I don't need the gloves, but I recommended them because it, it'll be hot. As you can see, this is the exhaust right here. You just get your engine there and you take it off. And you just have to break it loose and the rest will unscrew by hand. And also the transmission does get warm too, as mine is just letting me know now. So, this is the original one. I did take it apart. I wanted to see what it was inside there. So, make sure off your old sensor, um, right here on top, there's a brass washer. There's a brass washer that sits on top. Just take it off. Um, take your new one. You need that washer because it, it helps with getting the car into reverse. I guess it's a bit of a spacer. So just take your your sensor, slide the washer onto there. Now take it up to the car here. Just slide it into, into the hole and just start threading it into place. Now finger tight, grab your wrench. Mine has a cover, the original one had sealant on it that was in here. But you just want to tighten that down. Okay, so now onto the wiring. Uh, gotta get your, I have my wiring dangling here. You're gonna just have to feel for the wiring to get it hooked up. So it does take a bit of um, figuring. I had to reach both hands kind of up in this side here. If you get the plug through far enough on the other side, they just show up here. That took a bit of fiddling to get that, but now it's plugged in. So let's go outside of the car and see if it works. Alright, so I'm going to um, move the ignition on and then throw it to reverse. We got reverse light, the last piece of the puzzle. That's fast safety. So thanks guys for coming along with me on this little part of uh, the car build and a little maintenance tip. Um, hopefully that helps you out if you got the same problem with missing reverse lights.